Hello, and welcome to our SWELL review of A.7, A, B, C, and D. So we're going to talk about functions, domain and range, zeros, and x and y intercepts all in the same picture. So here I actually have four graphs on the screen. We're going to start off with if something is a relation or a function. Now, a graph like this, the easiest way to do it is just vertical line test. See, what we're looking for is we don't want any x values to repeat. So if I look here, if I just kind of take my pencil and use it as a vertical line, you can actually see that the graph touches the pen here twice. That is not a function. So not a function. Anytime it repeats an x value, not a function. Uh, yeah, here we have multiple problems. We got one, two, three, four. It hits five times. So this is also not a function. However, if we look at the third graph down there, we can see that if I take my pen and move left to right, it only ever touches the graph once. It might get close, but it's only ever going to touch it once at any time. So this is indeed a function. So we're happy with that one. And then the last one, the circle, yeah, you can tell pretty quickly, this is also not a function. You can also do this with some ordered pairs. So it doesn't necessarily have to be uh, you know, a connected line, for instance. And again, it's the same rule. It should only be one point on any given x value. So if I look here, all my vertical lines work. So this is indeed a function. And you can also do it with a set of numbers. The big thing is just do not repeat any x values. OK, let's go ahead and take a look back at the other graph page. Now, domain and range. What that is is domain is the values from left to right, and range is the values from down to up. So domain is the x values. So we'll go ahead and do that. Domain is x values, and range well, that the other one was x. This one is y values. So what you want to think about is with these graphs, what are all the possible x and y values? You've got to be careful because these number, these arrows mean that they go forever. They can't be contained. So here's what it is. Domain, we're always going to start the furthest left. And if you look, the furthest left this graph goes here, it looks like at negative 3. So... And there's some funny notation right with this. And I'll explain what this is. So this says here, this starts off with the set of all x values that are real, which is any possible x number. But here's where we really care. x can never be less than 3, negative 3. But when I look to the right, it's going to go forever because this graph goes forever. So x is going to be greater than negative 3. Now, one last question. Could it actually be negative 3? Yes, it can. Because if you look, the graph goes right there. And we can do the domain for a bunch of other graphs. The furthest left this graph seems to go is negative 3. And the furthest right this graph seems to go is 3. These arrows, we can't now hold on. Ooh, here's a problem. The arrows keep going past our boundaries. What that means is it's actually not going to be contained. You can't assume that this is just going to keep swirling like that. You have to do what you see and what the arrows tell you. So the arrows say, all right, from this point forward, it's going to keep going in a straight line. So this one is actually all real values. And the way that would be written, it starts off the same way. Um, you know, x is a part of all the real numbers. And so then it would be something like it would repeat that. You might even see sometimes the notation is x is between infinity and negative infinity. I've seen kind of all the different ways it could be written. So that's just kind of what you should look for. Um, domain of the ordered pairs is actually a lot easier. So all you got to do for this to find the domain is you just list all the x values. So let's see, negative 3 negative 1, 1, 3, and 4. 
So domain for ordered pairs is actually kind of nice. You don't actually have to do too much work. Uh, let's talk about range now. So the range of this first graph, and again, range goes down and up. It's the y values. And actually, the range is the same for both of these graphs. Because of the arrow going forever, this graph is going to keep going down forever, and it's going to keep going up forever. So kind of similar to what we had written before, our answer, y is part of all the real numbers. And it's just negative infinity y to infinity. It could be any possible y value would fall in the range. It's unfortunate, but that's what's going to happen. Uh, if we run into a problem like the circle down here, it's not really a circle, it's more of an ellipsoid, but, uh, or ellipse. The y values, the range, the lowest it is is negative 4, and the highest it is is 4. So the range for a graph like this would be something like y is a part of the real numbers, such that, and it would be from negative 4. It looks like it's touching, so we're going to go ahead and say include y to 4. And again, the, it's this, you know, an ellipse, so it's just going to keep going around and around and around. It's never going to go higher than 4, and it's never going to go lower than negative 4. Uh, with the ordered pairs, again, pre pretty straightforward. And now all you got to do is just list the values. So for range for this problem, uh, we would go ahead and do negative 4. We would do negative 2. We would do 1. We would do 3 and 4. So it's actually pretty similar to the last, uh, the domain even. All right, zeros. A zero is, uh, going back to the topic of quadratics, a zero is anywhere where it touches the x-axis. And if you look at this graph, it doesn't touch it once. If we go back to our big chart of multiple graphs, the first one here, uh, the zero would be right there. So it has one zero. This other graph also has one zero. It's kind of right there. That's all a zero is. It's just, where does it touch the x-axis? Oh, this one has two zeros, at negative three and positive three. Cool. And the ellipse also has two zeros. That's all a zero is. This graph doesn't have any. There's no ordered pair or point on the x-axis. So this doesn't have any zeros. Let's go ahead and change it to a fresh graph real quick. Now, uh, a zero, as we've talked about in previous videos, a zero is the same thing as x-intercept. And you could also have it where x-intercept, you know, zeros, or even roots. And this graph, when I look at it right here, has two x-intercepts. It also shares a y-intercept right there. So this has both two x-intercepts and a y-intercept. When I go back to some of the other graphs, like this one, for instance, this one has two y-intercepts, just like that. And that, this one had five. One, two, three, four, five. And the best way to find x and y-intercepts, honestly, is just to graph it. Now, you might actually get stuck in a situation where maybe instead of given a graph, you're given something like this, and you're told, hey, you've got to find the x-intercept and y-intercept. Well, OK. My first suggestion is you should still graph it. It's usually a lot easier to do it that way. But if you're stuck in a panic, here's what you do. To find the x-intercept, you're actually going to make y equal 0. And you might be saying to yourself, whoa, that doesn't make any sense. If I'm trying to find the x-intercept, why is y 0? All right, well, let's take a look at the graph real quick. And I'm going to give you this point right here. Hopefully you agree with me that that point I just added is on the x-axis, so it's an x-intercept. The ordered pair of that is negative 6, 0. Let's do another point. Uh, here you go, 7. That is also on the x-axis, so that is an x-intercept. And the point of that is 7, 0. See how I got 0 twice? Any point on the x-axis, the y value is 0. So when I want to find the x-intercept, I make y equal to 0. So here's what happens. 2x plus 3y equals 12. Well, now I'm going to replace y with 0. And if you watch, it drops out. And the only variable we're left with is x. And in this case, divide by 2. The x-intercept for this problem was 6. All right, cool. Now, we do the same thing with the y-intercept. Instead of 
y equals zero, we just do the opposite. X equals zero. So again, start with the problem, 2x plus 3y equals 12. I'm going to replace x with zero this time. So equals 12. I'm just going to clean it up. 0 plus 3y equals 12. So we get 3y equals 12. If I divide both sides by 3, y equals 4. So that's an algebraic way to do your x and y intercepts. Whew. Thanks for watching.